Good morning, podcasters. I'd like to welcome my guest who I'm in conversation with today, who is the magnificent Sharon Brown, founder of Revival Sanctuary and Motivate Magazine. And without further ado, I just want to say hello, Sharon. Hi, Shelley. Lovely Ooh. to be here. Hello. We've spoken on the phone before, and this is the first time I was just saying that it feels like we're in person. I know it's lovely. It's really, really nice to. Well, I have seen you. I have seen you on video before because you were one of our speakers, of course. But mm. yeah, it's lovely just to have a chat. I, thank God for Zoom, shall we? I know, and this feels like oh, I hate that word, the new normal. But it kind of feels normal now, doesn't it? I think it's going to be a lot more normal going forward as well. I think people are really going to adopt um, this more into the, their own businesses and stuff, and being online. And it is quite nice, as you said, it's quite nice sitting in your own living room, talking to as many people as you want without having to lift a finger or move. <laughs> oh, no. Quite and dangerous. It, and it completely shifts so the whole perspective of, um, of what a local business is now. Like, you kind of wonder how that's going to transform so many different businesses, don't you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's lovely that we can sit here, whether you're in Wolverhampton or wherever it is you are, and somebody on the other side of the world can log in in California. Yeah. And it's yeah. just like, we're here. And it's fantastic. I love it. It's, I've, I've never been a fan of video, I have to say. Mm. But this lockdown has definitely gave us something to think about and gave us something to practice on as well. So I'm quite thankful for it now. Yeah, I'm so with you. I still don't like video, but I'm becoming more comfortable with it. I'm, I'm getting over the whole... Oh, your hair looks rubbish and you make it. <laughs> you know, I, I don't even, I used to put on the, the glitz and the glam a bit. Oh, that's dispensed with completely. Um, anyway, <laughs> enough about me. So tell us about Revival Sanctuary first. I'm, I'm really interested in learning more about it. So Revival Sanctuary started just over two years ago. And, you know, it, it kind of came about because I wanted to start retreats. Long story short, it ended up evolving into this amazing community, global community, and we've got God knows how many countries now that are involved within uh, the sanctuary. But basically, Revival Sanctuary, it's a community of women in business who work together to achieve success through collaborative projects and teamwork, and that's the aim. So the whole ethos of the platform is collaboration over competition. We see well, personally, this is my experience. We see too many women who I feel are in competition mode, especially probably in the, the corporate world. So I kind of wanted to create it, to create a, a platform where we just help each other, we empower each other, we uplift each other. You know, if you're down, people lift you up. If you're up, people praise you. Um, and that's kind of what's happened. It's just such a lovely, lovely place to be. And to be honest, I don't know where I'd be without it now. It's just, it's become such a big part of my life. Um, and I know a big part of a lot of the other ladies' lives as well within the platform. And we've all made great friends and business associates. And there's a lot of business changing hands within the platform as well. So it's just a fantastic place to be, shall I? Yeah, it is. I mean, I've only joined it since the lockdown. Well, just before the lockdown, didn't I? And um, yeah. and so I've not had the opportunity to really embrace it fully. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. But I'm yeah. really curious. So how did you go from starting off as planning a retreat and then it turned into what it turned into? How, how did that transform? <laughs> well, in my head, because obviously I've got an events background and I've got the events business, Ludian Events Limited. So I thought, I'd quite like to do smaller, intimate events. So I've always wanted to do retreats. So I thought I'm going to do retreats. That's where the name came from. I kept thinking of names and I thought Revival Sanctuary. I want it to be a sanctuary, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, that was the plan. But then I thought, right, I'm going to put out a survey on LinkedIn or, or a post on LinkedIn rather, just to see what kind of feedback we get. And I'm not joking, Shirley, it went viral. It just went crazy. I had, well, viral in my terms. It was, it was, um, it was over half a million views. <gasps> That's viral um, in my terms too. It was, it was immense. I, and, you know, I try, I've tried to, I kept the post and I tried to do it again and I hardly get any. So it just, it's just really, really strange. But when I put that post out, I had over half a million views. I had God knows how many comments, likes, whatever. And then I had 500 emails. 
a woman um, saying, really interested in this and, um, you know, want to take it forward. So from there, from those emails, I created a survey for those women. Yeah. I put the survey out, find out what they wanted within the retreat. And a lot of the women, or most of the women, said they'd like a place to share their stories. So I hadn't even thought about that before, but I thought, okay. I can do that within the retreat, but how can I expand on that? So I built Revival Sanctuary as a platform and a safe space for the women to share their stories. And it's just completely evolved into so much more. So that's kind of how it came about. That's how the whole networking came about. Um, although it was going to be a retreat, I had always been searching for, well, since you know I started my own business, I'd also been searching for a network that was the right fit uh -huh. and I tried quite a few and I still didn't quite feel it's hard to explain but it's got it's got to be a hundred percent I'm sure you know what I'm talking about it's just got to be the right fit you've got to feel comfortable it's got to give you something and I hadn't found that yet so when I was creating the platform I thought what is it that women like me want mm -hmm. so that's what I've kind of created something that really feel fills my soul mm. and I think um I think it's hit the right note with a lot of women well it must have done because uh I find that oh god I can't believe I'm gonna say this I'm, I just say things that's gonna sound wrong but the, <laughs> the caliber of people in it and and that sounds like a classist thing and, and and it's not but I mean these are women that are really really serious about their businesses but not in a corporate kind of Margaret Thatcher, 1980s suit <laughs> way. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um. Yeah, but 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 they're not just dabbling. They really have a desire to to create something more than just I'm earning a bit of money. Does that make sense? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's. I think it's. Um, it brings out a lot of passion. Um, yeah. And I think the women that have joined are very very passionate about what they do. They're very knowledgeable about what they do. You know, in the last two years, myself, I mean, I've grown so much, can't tell you, through the knowledge and skills and learning from these other women. So, you know, for a, from a personal development point of view, from me, it's just been amazing. And even in a business sense as well, I think we've all grown together. But you're absolutely right. I think um, they say your vibe attracts your tribe, so that seems to be happening and the right people are joining and it's just really exciting for the future to be honest, shall we? So if you remember, I'm, I'm really curious, I bet everybody else is like, what did you write in that post? What, what did you say? <laughs> Do you know, it, it wasn't even that special. It wasn't like, you know, like crazy marketing. It was just, I think it was just, um, I've actually got it on my phone. Do you want me to tell yeah, you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm like, <laughs> right, bear with me. So um, you are quite good at coming up with good questions. I notice on social media, you're pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, I am quite good at questions because I know that's what people want. But it might take me a while to find this. Bear with me a second. Anyway, I'll sing a song. Oh, sing a song. Really? Sing no, a song. No, no, you really don't want me to sing a song. <laughs> I have got it in here somewhere because I did save it purely because I thought, all right, here we go, viral post on LinkedIn. Right, here we go. So the post just said, are you on LinkedIn every day for around 15 minutes? Oh, wait a minute, is this a different one? Hold on. <laughs> I think this might be a different one. Oh, no. No, that's a different one, sorry. Oh, no, I thought I'd saved the original, but this one actually went viral as well. So I had 300,000 views on this one. Oh, well, let's hear that one then. Let's hear that one. one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, are you on LinkedIn every day for 15 minutes? If so, would you like to be part of a strategy which involves supporting others within LinkedIn once a day? So this was all about the, the pods and, and the groups. Um, this is not a job offering, just a way of increasing your engagement. If you're looking to increase your footprint on here, it's a proven way to do it, but it takes commitment and consistency. And then it's just a lot of blah, blah, blah. But it's, um, yeah, over 300,000 views on that one. So it went a bit crazy. <laughs> it's strange. The algorithms are very strange, what they pick up and what they don't. 
No, but what I what I love about you, because my podcast is loosely about reinvention. And and I don't know you well. I just know a few conversations we've had, you know, and and uh and I know that you have kind of formed this out of frustrations with with what I call like other people's rule sets, you know, what yeah. what mm -hmm. other people create for you and, and make possible and say that that's what you should expect. So I'm interested in that. But um what I really love is that you spark an idea and then you and then you run with it and and i think that's a thing a lot of us don't do you know we have an idea no, no one's short of good ideas <laughs> how do you get from that place of hmm this looks interesting to suddenly you're you're in creation mode and you're doing stuff i've always always been a doer always i am from as far back as I can remember, if something came into my head, Shirley, I had to do it. Mm. It was, it's a burning desire. Um, when I was younger, I always, I always wanted to travel and we never had the money when I was younger, but I always wanted to travel the world. And I had these big dreams. And even when I was at school, you know, I was very different to my schoolmates because they all had kids, family, whatever in their heads, whereas I had big dreams. And I always knew there was more out there for me. Um, so when the opportunity came up in terms of traveling, I did 10 years of traveling the world. I just done it. I was terrified in some cases, but I just done it. I thought I'm just going to do it because I'll not, you know, I might never get the chance again. So I think the mindset that I've got is probably along the lines of you only live once, you're only here once. So, you know, you don't want to have regrets in your life. You don't want to regret, you know, that old cliche, regret the things you've done, not the things you haven't done. Mm -hmm. And I truly, truly believe that. So it's the same with ideas. So if I get an idea, don't get me wrong, I've got a whole book of ideas and I've written them down and I won't get through all of them because there's so many, but I pick and choose the ones that I feel have got good you know, a good feeling about them. They've, they've given me a really good gut instinct. Um, so Revival Sanctuary was one. I just knew from the start that was going to be a winner. Motivate Magazine, I knew instantly that was going to be a winner because I had, if I've got the whole vision in my head already, I know it's going to work. And the next project we launch in September is going to be a winner. Um, so it's, yeah, I think you just have to do it. If you've got that idea and you've got a really burning desire to make it work and you've, you've got a gut feeling that you know it's going to work, you have to do it. Yeah. So, you know, it's how do I get from the idea to doing it? I just, I don't know how that transition happens, but as soon as it comes into my head, the, the mind starts, um, the cogs start turning, if you like, and I start thinking, right, what's the next move? How do I get this moving? Who can I find to work in this project with me? Because for me, you know, it's mostly about collaboration. So if I can get other people, the right people to collaborate with on the projects, then it's bound to be a success. I think that's, that's maybe the key thing where most, you know, the phrase that the Americans have got as coining is solopreneur, but most people that work for themselves, that's the place they get stuck, isn't it? Of, of either, or I, I can't work with somebody else until, or, or they get so busy that they, they can't then share. I'm too busy to share. You know, they get stuck in this vortex, if you like, of, of busyness. Um, yeah. So what made you do that? I mean, I mean, it's perfectly sensible, rational, logical <laughs> thing to do, but we don't do the logical, rational, most of us. So what made you think, okay, because it's a lot of trust to let go of stuff. And that's where a lot of people get stuck. And, oh, who can I trust? How do you do that? Well, absolutely. I am. Um, it's it's a massive thing, to be honest. It's massive, and especially if you've if you're doing it with quite a few people. And some of the projects, you know, that I have collaborated with other people, they haven't worked, and I've had to end them for various reasons. Because sometimes when you're in a project, you don't realise um, that maybe your values are different, or that certain your certain vision's different or whatever it may be. And then when you're in the project, you think, oh, what have I done? And that has happened on a couple of occasions in the past. Now I'm very, very careful. And I try to look at people's skills. I look at their work ethic. 
I look at their attitude. Um, you know, the, the projects that I put together, I need people that are committed, Shirley. I need people who have got enthusiasm for the project, who believe in the project. I don't just want people coming on board and it's, oh, well, you know, that's never going to get any of us anywhere. And I always, always believe that you're always as strong as your weakest link. Mm. So we really need, when you, when you collaborate, you need to be on the same page in so many levels. So it's not an easy thing to do, right. but it's something that I feel works. I definitely feel it works within Revival Sanctuary because I think everybody within there now knows what my expectations are in terms of value, integrity and everything else. So they know what they're getting themselves into. They know that I'm firm but fair, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I lead on all the projects, but in the same instance, everybody's got the autonomy to do their role within that project. You know, and I welcome ideas, I welcome flexibility, I welcome change. So if somebody's got a better idea to run that project, then I'm happy to go with that. You know, I don't need to be the big control freak um, with these projects. And that's something I've had to learn over the past few years, because I think as any event person will tell you, you kind of, you, you need to be in control of that project. I am... Um, and it's very hard for an events person to let things go because you're just, it's such a stressful job. You need to be on top of everything. Mm. So yeah, that's been a learning curve is just putting the trust in other people and giving them the autonomy to do what they're more than capable of doing. So yeah. I think, I think that's working much better now. I just say, yeah. right, carry on. <laughs> and then I can have a break. <laughs> mm. Yes. Well, you say you, you're good at that balance, but it does always look like you're very busy. Um, I am I, busy. I am busy. Yeah. But, you know, in the same hand, everybody says that to me, that you look like you work 24 hours a day, basically. And I, I don't know what, how it looks like that, because I have got a very good work-life balance. I'll take days off. Um, I'll still check in every now and again and see what's happening because it's my business at the end of the day. So I have to just make sure that everything's running. And I think, as you know, it's very hard to take any time off when you've, you're running your own business. It's always on your mind. So I've got a very good work-life balance. You know, I'm planning to go away next year for three or four weeks on holiday and I will be taking that as a break. And I'll worry about that when I get there. <laughs> so, yeah, it's... Um, it's interesting it's it's i don't know it's funny how other people perceive you because i know other people just think i'm constantly constantly you know doing something and i tend to be a busy person anyway but i have got a lot of relaxation time too maybe it's just that you you manage it so well that it, it you've got it all planned out and it looks like you're always busy but you've done the planning and the work in advance which is instead of constantly being the person doing the things well this is it you know and I have um I have put some working hours in place on the website and kind of in my head so out with those hours I then make it my choice do I want to answer emails do I want to go on social media and then you know if I've got nothing else happening and I'm a bit bored to be honest I'll say right okay I'll just do this but, you know, it's, it's purely my choice. I don't do it because I need to answer that at that point in time. I do it because I want to do it if I do do it. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes I'm a bit elusive with emails because I just think, right, I've got other things I need to be doing and I'll answer those emails in a little bit. But um, it's definitely my choice. I don't, I'm not a slave to my business anymore. <laughs> I'm pleased to hear that. So yeah. let me just backtrack a little um to before you started so before you posted that email and you were in the corporate world presumably you were in the corporate world I was. I was. yeah tell us how you reinvented yourself and what led to that reinvention there um i have a sense that it might be similar to my story and a lot of other people's stories but what was it that made you think i've got to i've got to get out of here <laughs> well <laughs> The best decision ever. Um, well, basically, I was working in the corporate world and I was sort of, without getting into the whole backstory, I was kind of um, hoping for this promotion that was going. And I had been made to think 
that I was going to get this promotion because I'd been working in the job for quite a while. I'd saved the company thousands in this job. Um, and I'd done a very, very good job, to be honest. And everybody, you know, was singing my praises. So did the interview, the internal interview, if you like, and didn't get the job. So that was fine. I wasn't happy. I am... Um, there was only other one, one other candidate who did get the job, who was an external candidate and had, in my opinion, much less experience. However, during the period I was doing the job, I had challenged quite a few people on various different things, which, as you probably know in the corporate world, mm -hmm. doesn't go down well. No, no. When you're not a yes person, they don't no. want you. Um, and I've had that. You I've just had stop that, that initiative thing. I just yes. stop that. Well, that's exactly what it is. Just stop <laughs> having a brain. Do as you're told. You know, that's kind of the. I don't know. That that's that's a whole other conversation. But you know, management, people management, people just companies just don't seem to have a clue to put the right people in place. Mm -hmm. However, um, long story short, I was mad for a couple of weeks, and then. I woke up one morning with this idea <laughs> that um, if they don't value me, I'm going to value myself, basically. So that day, I applied to Company's House. I, I thought about the name and everything, and I wanted to name my business. I wanted it to have meaning. So I named Ladine Events Limited. That was born that day in 2015. And I named it after my mum because my mum's got a very long line of Lydia's in her family and it kind of stopped at me. So I thought, right, how can I do this? So I did that um, and I made my logo very relevant to my family and everything. So started the, the business then, just completely lifted all that kind of anger and resentment. Everything just lifted that day when I opened that business and company's house because I could see maybe three or four years down the line that you know things would be very very different and this is now three or four years down the line and things are very different so that's kind of how it all started I left the company um a while later let's say and I just felt really really happy I did take another job to, to get out of that company very quickly I took another job on um, which is not worth mentioning because it was probably the worst job I've ever had in my life. <laughs> um, honestly, it was just horrendous. But I stayed there because the money was good. And basically, I got to work in my business quite a lot because they didn't really give me that much to do. So I ended up working a lot on my business. So everything for a reason. And then I left there 18 months later. I don't know how I lasted 18 months, but I left there 18 months later and I had saved off enough money to go self-employed and um, the rest has to really shovel. So that was it. Uh, I really, really love it because there's so many lessons in there, you know, the, and the main one being when you said, if, if the, they're not going to value me, then I'll value myself. Yeah. Uh, because that's a really, really tough lesson that many of us wrestle with like for our entire lives. So that in itself is, is a fantastic lesson, but that whole, you know, you, you just were ch chatting about it, you know, the saving that you did, um, the decision around, you know, this is connected, you know, that whole lifting of resentment, because that eats, yeah. that eats away resentment. It eats well. away, especially when you've, you know, when you've worked for a company for quite a few years and you be, you're treated badly. Mm. And I know there's, there's thousands and probably millions of people that have been through this. Yeah. Um, you know, corporate companies don't seem to learn the lesson. They lose a lot of good staff because mm. of the management process, because of the HR process. They're not doing themselves any favours. And as a business owner who have, who's learned a lot over the last five years, I can see that very, very clearly now. At the time, you know, I just couldn't understand. I couldn't understand why they would treat me like that I, I couldn't understand why they couldn't see the value that they could get um but I understand now that these companies don't actually care you are yeah. literally just a number um at the time it's hard to, to understand especially if you really enjoy your job but you know it was the best thing that ever happened because if that hadn't happened I wouldn't be where I am now 
So yeah. it was a really, really good lesson for me to learn. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was a gift. So it was a gift. <laughs> So tell us briefly, I'm mindful of the time and, and I've really enjoyed talking to you and I could, I could talk to you for ages, but you've got other things to do. Um, <laughs> but just quickly about Motivate Magazine, because you said that was another idea that you knew was a winner. Yeah. But, but I'm curious about why. Like there's magazines all over the place. Why did you know that was a winner? That's anybody's guess, to be honest. <laughs> I cannot tell you. I can't, I can't explain to you why I knew... Because I had, well, let's put it this way, the magazine is born out of the idea for the retreat. So I put together that retreat that I had wanted to put together at the start, which is Motivate. And again, I looked for something that wasn't out there. And I thought about what I wanted. If I wanted to go on retreat, what, what would I want? So Motivate covers six different areas of your life. So then when I was thinking about the magazine, and I think I'd had this thought probably last year at some point, but I kind of laid it to rest because I thought, no, it'll come back. If it keeps coming back, then it's, it's a good one. Um, so the retreat was fantastic. Um, and everything just worked perfectly. It was just an amazing experience. And from there, last September, I kept thinking about this magazine. I was thinking, hmm, hmm, should I, should I? But then this year, and I think lockdown had really brought it to the forefront, it just started to, I don't know, it just started to materialise in my brain what it was going to look like and, and how I could transfer the retreat and the things that was taken from the retreat onto paper. So then I just thought, right, let's do it. So again, it was about putting a team together. So I put a team together. Um, I got Daniel on board, who's the designer. And we've just went with it. So within about five or six weeks from me saying, right, that's it. I want to do this. From about five or six weeks, the magazine was then born. And it's just, it is really, really good, I have to say. Um, and it gives everybody a really, really good feeling. And everybody that's part of the magazine or writes an article for the magazine is also feeling that buzz. Because for me, any project I do, I want everybody to feel involved, like they're a part of it as opposed to just, you know, me. Um, I want everybody to feel that they've had something to do with that magazine and that they feel a part of it and they feel valued. Again, that word value, that's mm -hmm. really key for me. And that stems way back to when I didn't feel valued, I want other people to feel valued. So that's kind of what the projects are bringing together, which I'm really happy about, to be honest. So, so yeah, I can't give you the exact... <laughs> formula um, <laughs> I can't give you the exact formula for funnily enough it's called the winning formula but I can't give you the exact formula for me knowing that that was going to be a winner but it's just it's just my gut feeling and I think I've kind of learned enough through other projects that I've done and through the experiences I've had over the past few years to kind of get that feeling I just know yeah. But again, it's to do with the team. I need that enthusiasm from the team. And if I don't have that, then I start having doubts. And if I have mm. doubts, I'm like, mm. Mm. it worries me if I have doubts. But that is the point. So I wasn't looking for a formula because I'm actually a great disbeliever in formulas because formulas get you someone else's business, not your, and, and someone else's life, in my view. Um, but they're like the key elements when you know you're looking for something that feels right and, and oh god this sounds like very oh i'll just go with what feels right but you know trusting your doubts and trusting your enthusiasms and trusting your team so the key lessons there i think are just learning more about trust and learning more about um listening and, and understanding the difference between a, a voice that comes from outside which is someone else going nah. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah and your voice is going, nah, you know, that that's very subtle and takes a while to, to learn. And I feel like you're probably becoming a bit of a Zen master with it. Yeah, well, I've had enough kind of, I think when the red flags start showing at the start, that's, that's a big indicator to me. I used to wait and wait and wait and get about 10 red flags before I did anything. <laughs> and then, and then think, why didn't I do something yeah. at the first one? Um, but now if I get a red flag, I'm kind of like, mm, okay. I am, I am a very perceptive person, especially in people's responses. So if 
I see certain behaviours, and I don't mean I'm judgmental, but I can pick up on things very, very easily. I can pick up on vibes. I can pick up on people who are all this and not much action, if you know what I mean, because there's a lot of people out there like that. Um, and I do think that you really should go with those red flags. You should, you should think about them. I do allow one or two now, but then I'm kind of like, no, they need to either step up or step out because it's, it's just going to go down the same road, unfortunately. And, you know, once I get that feeling, it's in my head. <laughs> it's very hard to change it. Yeah. It would, it would need to be drastic, but it would be very hard to change it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think just go with your gut. Your gut tells you everything. Absolutely everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm mindful, as I said, of the time and uh, I could talk to you for hours, but thank you so much. I feel like I've learned a lot and I hope anyone listening to this is also learning a lot. I'm sure they are. Oh, thank it's, been you. Lovely. it's been really nice, Shelley. Thank you. No, you're welcome. And I look forward to seeing you at some point in a, in a live venue one day. <laughs> one day. Yeah. When we can get back to civilization. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And bye for now. Thanks, Shelley.